If you've been paying attention to the national and international headlines, you've seen, obviously, the drone attack that happened in Saudi Arabia on their uh, little, I guess, their oil facilities uh, there and uh, causing quite the disruption. Saudi Arabia and the United States, or at least the United States right now, blaming Iran. And this also ties into what's going on between Saudi Arabia and Yemen. And to to kind of break everything down uh, for us on this is our uh, good friend, uh, Senior Director of the Center for National Interest. Normally we visit with him about North Korea. Uh, All's kind of quiet right now with North Korea, and instead we're going to focus on the Middle East. And Harry Kazianis joining us here on the Chad Eastie Show. Harry, welcome back to the program. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be back. Well, it's uh, it, it we, we got another fire going on uh, in uh, this time in the Middle East. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, what I want you to do is kind of first give us a little bit of background between how you've got Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Iran, and the United States all tangled up uh, in, in, in this conflict that is continuing to brew uh, in that area. Well, I think you kind of said it best. They all are sort of tangled up. I mean, I think the first thing that that you need to know is obviously the United States and Iran have tensions going back decades. But obviously the biggest one is the Trump administration canceling the Iran nuclear deal, raising tensions with Tehran, which I think the Trump administration made the right call there. But obviously that pushes the Iranians into a very angry sort of place because they're not allowed to really export any oil. And that has basically created their economy. At the same time, you have a terrible civil war going on in Yemen, which is pitting Saudi Arabia against a rebel faction called the Houthis. And the Houthis are funded in many respects and given a lot of arms by Iran. Enter what happened on Sunday, where it's still a little bit unknown, but most of the intelligence points to the fact that it looks like at least some faction in Iran you either used ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drones. The, the information is basically all over the place. But no matter what happened, the, the, it looks that that facility was damaged in Saudi Arabia to such an extent that 50% of Saudi oil is off the market right now. Mm-hmm. And to give you an idea how big that is, Saudi Arabia produces over 10 million barrels of oil per day. So when you go to the gas pump in the next couple of days and you're wondering, why am I paying 15 cents more a gallon? That's why. Well, and, and I mean, then, then we can get into the whole thing of, well, aren't we, should, don't, don't we have enough oil here in the United States where that can be taken care of? But, but I want to focus on, on the international scheme on this. Why is Iran involved in what's going on in Yemen? Well, they, unfortunately, they're backing this group called the Houthis. And Iran has a very big regional focus all throughout the Middle East. I mean, what Iran wants to do is essentially big the big, be the big boy in that part of the world. Look at what they've done in, in Iraq. They they've literally have their blood on their hands, killing U.S. troops by supporting factions there. They support factions in Syria. They, they support that butcher uh, uh, Assad, who's essentially allowed millions of people to, to leave Syria creating massive refugee crises, crises. Iran has essentially fueled that. So if you look at any fire in the Middle East, Iran is essentially at the center of it. And now, because of the tensions between the United States and Iran over the nuclear deal, over the sanctions that the Trump administration has placed on Iran, their economy is is in tatters. It's back in recession. Inflation is high. There's been food shortages in parts of Iran. So Iran is essentially trying to strike back. Well, we've seen them... uh take oil tankers we we have we 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 see them continuously pushing the line harry is is this a nation that is trying to see how far they can go before they provoke a reaction from the united states other than more sanctions i mean we keep adding more sanctions and iran keeps doing whatever they want to do it seems like you know it's kind of crazy chad this is one of those situations where we're not even really sure if it's the Iranian state that's doing this. There's a hardline faction in the Iranian military called the IRGC, and they are armed to the teeth. They have a lot of the latest cruise missiles, drones, you name it. They even, in fact, have a drone that looks exactly like our Predator drones that we've used in Iraq and Afghanistan. So they're, they're very well armed. The thing is, they do not want to see a detente between the United States and Iran. There's been a lot of talk, Chad, floated over the last few weeks that President Trump 
could actually meet Iranian President Rouhani at the U.N. when we have the big meetings over the next few weeks. So there's a theory that's being floated out there that maybe elements of the Iranian military launched this strike to create problems between Tehran and Washington. This way there is no meeting. This way there is no detente, and we stay at loggerheads. So it's one of those things where not only do we have to figure out where the strike came from, we've got to figure out if it was Iran, who in Iran actually did it. So it's a very complicated mess. Well, and then what... What should the reaction or what do you think the reaction from the U.S. would be once we find out those answers? Well, if this was an Iranian state-backed attack, in other words, if this was the president of Iran or, you know, the, the Ayatollah or the foreign minister or somebody who was in the government and it had the stamp of approval by Iran to launch this attack, there's only two options in the United States. One, if you, if you do not want to get into a military confrontation, you, there's a lot more sanctions we can hit the Iranians with, and we can essentially destroy their economy if we want to. But that could elicit an Iranian reaction. Second thing that you could do is you could actually go for a military strike. I mean, there is precedence for that. I mean, the Ronald Reagan did something similar in the late 1980s to punish the Iranians. What we could do is we could launch a military campaign with stealth fighters and bombers, and do a lot of damage to their oil facilities. Now, that's not very attractive at the moment because they're not pumping out oil, but it would do, obviously, a lot of damage in the long term for them. So the thing that I worry about is if you do go into a military strike, the Iranians do have the capability to attack and attack hard. They could do a lot of damage to our bases. There's a lot of theories out there that they could even sink a U.S. warship or maybe even an aircraft carrier. So this is something President Trump has to weigh very carefully. Do you think the U.S. is likely to launch any type of military effort, or are they likely to, especially with this president, because this president, he seems to want to have more regional allies handle issues. You know, you look at with North Korea, for instance. Uh, he's he's been a big fan of South Korea getting involved. It hasn't just been a U.S. effort. I would think that maybe in the Middle East, he's kind of one, wanting maybe a Saudi Arabia, probably Israel, and, and some other nations to lead this effort and not necessarily the United States, right? Yeah, and I mean, this is a big problem for U.S. foreign policy. We keep getting sucked back into the Middle East. I mean, think about when we, going back to President Obama. He tried to get out of the Middle East. He had this whole idea that we would pivot to Asia, and that basically blew up in his face because of, guess what, problems in the Middle East. And Trump is really having to confront the same challenges. So, you know, I think the president is spot on that we do have to have regional allies pulling their weight, making sure that Iran's contained. Because, Chad, it can't always be us doing the heavy lifting. I mean, we have a lot of problems at home. And this is one of the reasons Trump is popular, the reason he got elected in 2016, because he's pointed these problems out, that we can't be the world's policemen. Now, of course, if there's a direct threat on U.S. interests, and I would argue, you know, oil prices going through the roof is a threat in our interests. We have to respond, but we have to have, make sure that our allies are backing us and that if this does become some sort of regional confrontation, that they're going to put in troops, money, fighter planes, men and women, that, that they're going to back us. Otherwise, it's, it's a huge problem. We just can't do everything. Is there, and we're visiting with Harry Kazianis here on the Chad HT Show, uh, you mentioned this, this idea that's been talked about uh, of President Trump maybe meeting with the Iranian president. Uh, do, do you think that if that meeting doesn't happen in the next few days, I guess they're at the U.N., is is that anything to read into, or is that just, well, maybe the meeting didn't happen? You know, I'll be honest. I think it was always a long shot. And, I, I, you know, look, the president is this type of person where he's willing to meet with anybody. I mean, look, I never thought he would ever meet with Kim Jong-un in my lifetime, but he did it. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. So I, I wouldn't really read into it. I, I think the chances are pretty slim. I pro I'm going to make a wild guess and say that the Iranians and the Americans are probably talking behind the scenes through back channels, trying to avoid some sort of confrontation. But I think where this all sort of plays out, is if this was a rogue faction in Iran that did this, I think that'll probably lower tensions because at least there's a, somewhat of a logical explanation and it wasn't the Iranian government. But if there's a smoking gun, we find out that the Iranian state actually did this, all bets are off. How does Saudi Arabia not have more protection around their oil facilities? You know, that's a, that's a great question. And, and you know what's funny? The, the, the Saudis have spent billions of dollars on U.S. missile defenses, Patriot batteries, you know, stuff we saw during the, the, the first Gulf War that's been massively upgraded, stuff that we sell 
all over the world. The Saudis are even starting to get into something called THAAD, which is an even more advanced missile defense system. I mean, they have the, the creme de la creme of U.S. military power. Problem is that those things can be defeated. A lot of these different drone assets, different missiles, if you fly them very low to the ground, they can defeat those military assets. Plus, you got to remember, we don't really know how effective the Saudis are in terms of their training programs and learning how to use these military capabilities, how they tie them into their military. I mean, it's a different ballgame when you have a U.S. operator who's gone through massive amounts of education to, to understand how these things work different when you hand it to a foreign country who might not know all the ins and outs. So it's possible that the whoever did this attack, most likely Iran, was able to exploit some of those things and, and launch a strike. Mm, very interesting. Uh, Harry Kazianis, as always, it's a, a pleasure to visit with you, and uh, we get a lot of good information, and uh, we appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. That's uh, Harry Kazianis, Senior Director for the Center for National Interest, here on the Chad Eastie Show.